You joined Sweet Comfort Band, was it 1973? How old were you then? And what led to, to that whole gig? You're going to make me do the math? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. I, I think I was probably 19 or 20 when I yeah. uh, was, started the band. I don't remember. I was like 1974. Somebody will do the math. What year is it yeah. now? I'm going... Yeah. 2021. It's decades. It's decades, yeah. and we decades. don't want to talk about it. <laughs> well, uh, but I think it speaks to the longevity of uh, your career and just, uh, you know, the commitment to to playing music and, and writing and composing and not losing that. You know, what's really fire. funny is I remember... I remember when Leon Patello uh, had just gotten saved mm -hmm. and, and he showed up, he, he did a, an opening thing for the sweet comfort band really? on a Saturday night. That was the big deal in Calvary chapel. Yeah. And it was one of the first times he ever played. And he, I mean, he was stupid good <laughs> and, you know, but he was fresh out of, uh, you know, what band was he in? Santana. Yeah. He was fresh out of Santana and yeah. He sounded like it. I mean, he had, <laughs> personally, I liked him better when he sounded more heathen. <laughs> yeah, he had some good tunes back then. And he shared with us a story about how he was instrumental in, in helping to lead Carlos to the Lord, which is pretty cool. Wow, that's... Yeah, that story, I didn't even cool. know. Yeah, yeah. So well, he also got me backstage at a Carlos Santana gig. Yeah. I think we were on tour at the time and we went to see him. Uh-huh, that's cool. Wow. Um, tell us about your years with the group. That was like six, seven, eight years with Sweet Comfort Band. Uh, all I can think about is, is uh, cutting edge and uh, perfect timing. But the, the album art back then was unbelievable uh, for a lot of those bands. I don't know who was doing all that airbrush art, but it was just for somebody that loved uh, art like myself and, and music, it was just incredible. Well, Sweet Comfort Band was together for probably 11 years. 11 years, okay. Um, and, you know, the, the album cover thing, uh, it's like everything good, you know, is it starts with a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we had an album cover come out and it was called Hold On Tight. The album was called Hold On Tight. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it was like a, back then that was a lot of money, but it was like a $50,000 project. Wow. And we we put we went to Caribou Ranch up in Colorado. You know, Elton John had just recorded there. And uh -huh. in fact, uh, a couple of the guys from the Beach Boys were still hanging around when yeah. we were there. And uh, we get we, we put all this money into this project and the and the record company put a two hundred and fifty dollar project cover on it. It was just horrible. I mean, it was. It was like little construction paper uh, yeah. letters. And, you know, it was outlined in a brown flare tip pen. I'm going, are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me. It was just the worst cover of all time. And, and after that, we decided, okay, you know, if you want something done right, go yeah. do it yourself. Right. That sounds like my father. <laughs> well, you know, and that's the thing. It, yeah. um, Kearney Erickson is the guy you should be complimenting for those album covers. Mm -hmm. Really? Um, he, we saw what he did on, uh, it was an album by a group called Mustard Seed Faith. I've and heard it's them. Still, yep. still one of the best album covers ever. And it was, mm. the album was called Sail on Sailor. If you get a chance to mm -hmm. Google that one, look yeah. at that album cover. It was stupid, stupid yeah. good. Cool. So we just, see, we decided, okay, you're doing our covers for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> And, and by dog, he, he was yeah. the guy that we went to every time. And, and you know, it created a, you know, a, what do you call that? It's not legend, but, uh, you know, a legacy. That's what Legacy, yeah, right. I mean, I'm sure that he did some other groups' artwork, too. And I don't want to just keep focusing on that, but it just reminds me of some other bands, too, that had, had that. I think Res Band had a lot of interesting <laughs> album covers. Petra did later on. So... Kind of like a well, I know, um, offshoot industry. <laughs> I don't know who did "Awaiting Your Reply" by uh, Res Band, but that was a fabulous cover. Oh, yeah. And then there was a group called Servant that looked like they started stealing our cover ideas. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Yeah. I thought of those uh, a few times. They were like a Christian commune in Oregon, or Seattle, somewhere out there. 
Yeah. Well, you know what? Everybody knew who Servant was uh -huh. because they were one of the few Christian bands that had an entire sound and light system. And, you know, they were always perpetually on tour. So, you know, I think every Christian band that was out at the time uh -huh. opened for Servant at one point or another, just so because wow. I'm going, wow, they got that's sound nice. and lights. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. So not a lot of people are able to make that transition from uh, being the lead singer and a keyboardist for a band and then do a successful solo career. But you did that for a number of years after getting done with Sweet Comfort Band. And uh, I loved your music playing it on the radio back in the day. My wife absolutely loves your music, uh, still does. But the, I guess what, what I, we appreciated with the releases that you had, solo releases, was the joy and the exuberance and just the upbeat attitude and spirit with which uh, you brought your songs. It was just always so fun. I mean, you know, the latest stuff that I was just watching off your website, is uh, it www.brian.com, brianduncan.com? Well, yeah, it's just brianduncan.com. Yeah. Uh, Spell Brian with a Y or you y. Want, you'll find Brian Adams yeah. first, I think. <laughs> right, exactly. That does pop up. Um, but just the fun that you're having in the background, doing your little uh, sides, uh, kind of solo pieces with the, the band. I'm not sure if it's, uh, uh, was it Salo? There was a band that you were in later on. That's the uh, background musicians and vocals to this recent oh you were you're talking about the neo soul neo band, soul band. Yeah, yeah yeah it's a weird name it just it was just a new ver it's it was a we just put a weird spelling to new soul you know okay. neo like yeah. n-e-o uh -huh. but if you just if you spelled it neo soul n-e-o it sounded like neo nazi <laughs> <laughs> yeah right you didn't we, wanna, we didn't really want to go there but you know, not at all no especially with all this and of course, Neo, Neo Soul was coming out of uh, England at the time, and there was oh. some groups that we really liked at the that I really liked was uh -huh. there's one group called Soul to Soul that was out of the UK. Yeah, and I just liked the fact that they were they were bringing a modern sound to original R and B soul music, mm -hmm. and you know, because I've never gotten tired of that. No, no, and well, you should not. So you you your sound has been categorized that way: rhythm, soul, uh, blues, pop, uh, just upbeat stuff. When you uh, one of the questions I want to ask you: when you're writing a song or composing a song, what kind of process or is it a process? Do you just sort of get a download from heaven all of a sudden? And you're in this vision like Ezekiel, <laughs> and and all of a sudden it just comes to you. Uh, oh, I yeah, say that in jest, but. Um, um i know no, you some, make it sound yeah. you make it sound like it's a divine intervention you know <laughs> it's usually it's usually a quagmire of conflicted thoughts that creates oh, wow. i like that quagmire of conflicted thoughts uh you know and, and and they're usually there's some kind of a juxtaposition you see you see one feeling and then you have a you have an objection to it so mm -hmm. you it's like love takes time, you know, yeah. you're going, I mean, the opening line is, have you ever been lied to, mm -hmm. you know, thought to be someone you just can't be? Yeah. Where's the love? Yeah. <laughs> Those yeah. are, right. going, you yeah. know, uh, but that got people's attention. And then you had yeah. a chance to say something else. Well, and, it's kind of like David Psalms, you know, when David's being honest before God, he's like, you know, where have you been, God? You know, this guy came in, he was uh, in the temple with me and he turned his back. And he, you know, like he's dagger in the back kind of thing. So it, I don't think that we're honest enough as Christians sometimes with our faith that we just sort of put up a, a mask or a pretense. So your lyrics and, and message uh, help shock us out of that. You're being honest. You know, it helps us. One of the early one of the early solo projects they did was called Strong Medicine. Mm -hmm. And I was I was getting a little, uh, you know, resentful. I don't know something. <laughs> um and i thought i i was gonna i was committing you know christian suicide you know by by saying some things can't be explained like you'd like them to be yeah i find it easier to curse than pray and i thought if i put that song if i put that on a recording you know yeah. i'm never gonna get invited to a church the rest <laughs> of my life mm, which is sad it's sad to think that way but but it shouldn't be that way hopefully things are changing with our honesty about that. I remember, um, you say that, but there was a publication out back in the day 
that that I think helped us Christians to become more honest about our doubts. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Wittenberg door, but that was. Oh, a, yeah, I love oh that gosh. guy. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that guy became a friend of mine. He, really? he also he had the green the green weenie award that i just he was entertaining boy yeah, yeah. i can't think of his name right now but he wrote a book called messy spirituality before he died and uh -huh. yeah um uh, you know i just resonated with him i mean it was guys like that right that that really gave me hope that i could have a faith in jesus and you know as as uh, incongruent as my life might look right you know, one of the problems in a lot of times in CCM is they're kind of expecting you to, yeah, to project, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the perfect image of yeah. what it means to know Jesus. And, you know, I don't know anybody that doesn't have some low spots and mm -hmm. some defects of character that they, they yeah. got to work. With. Amen. That's so true. And now we've got Babylon B to help us with that. It seems like they've taken up the the torch yeah they kind of the door. i think the babylon b took <laughs> over uh, they took over for uh the wittenberg door <laughs> yeah exactly that's right and of course Dol donald miller uh who's a great author uh can't think of the two or three books he's done now so what one's about dragons but he he uh he's always bringing up uh taboo subjects and and giving his take on them and I think just help Donald us. Miller is that yeah. is that the guy that did jazz uh, blue like jazz yes yes that's that's the seminal work there yeah great author no I, you know I talked to him on the phone a couple of times because really? I, I did wow. like his work uh-huh um and also the guy that the guy that wrote the shack uh, I had oh, coffee Paul. with him once uh, when I was yeah. that way. we've had him on our show a couple of times Paul's a great guy loves the Lord great guy I was really surprised you know I I I was kind of uh, giddy about meeting him just because he had he had such a colorful uh, take on things, you know, mm -hmm. and, but there were a lot of people that, you know, Christian faith that mm -hmm. that uh, that were not were nervous about him. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> felt yeah. like he was a universalist. I don't I don't know where I, he falls on all that. But, yeah, you know, the one thing that, uh, that keeps me trusting yeah. that, you know, that God has you uh, mm -hmm. is that uh, there's a place in the Bible that says, you know, nobody comes to the father except he is drawn by the spirit of God. And, right. you know, we have a tendency to see somebody that's not on the same page that we are mm -hmm. and think, oh, well, they're, you know, I've got to fix them. Yeah. And, you know, that was, that was one of my biggest mistakes is, is trying to, is to feel like, I needed to make everybody think exactly the way I do and right. have the same right. opinions about yeah. the scriptures and about right. the truth that I do. And, you know, and no wonder I was frustrated. Yeah. No wonder I was saying, have you ever been lied to? And I find it easier to curse than pray. <laughs> it's like, I'm going, I don't, I don't see that. The trouble with the truth is it's always the same old thing. And I'm always usually a couple of lines short of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always have an opinion that may or may not be an accurate uh, perspective on mm -hmm. what God is doing. Yeah, that's true. I think, I think uh, it comes down to, you know, we have love and truth, uh, sometimes kind of opposing one another when they shouldn't. You can win an argument, but lose a soul. And I think if we, and this been my struggle too through the years, being a pastor and all, is sometimes I get too fired up about truth that I forget that I need to love first. And, uh, you know. Well, you know, the truth will make you hate people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It will make you hate people. You're going, well, you ain't doing it right. And right. Uh, you know, I mean, that one of the re one of the things we were, I was talking to somebody the other day about, uh, you know, the fact that you know several Christian artists from the old days have kind of recanted their story or kind of gone a different direction and i'm going uh you know it's easy to write people off when they're when they're struggling with a particular thing but you know i mean there is no point in being turning into somebody self-righteous yeah because right. you don't agree with what somebody else is right where somebody's going and, and it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that you agree with the path they're traveling but just to be empathetic and uh, I'll just think of Russ Taft's story, you know, he just had the movie to come out about him and God bless Bill and Gloria Gaither for taking him under their wing 
and almost makes me weep thinking about that story because he had so much pressure seeing it for the Imperials and his solo career. And then he had his struggle with depression and alcohol. Oh, you're preaching to the choir. I'm telling you're you, preaching man. to the choir. Yeah, it's you know, I was there the night that he uh, uh, embarrassed himself on on a national TV program. I was really? I was on that show. Wow. And you know, and I toured with him for six weeks on the road, and I. Wow. I never see the saw the problems that he was having. Never once didn't even cross my mind. Yeah. But one thing I know about him, and I was I did a concert with him uh, about two weeks after that movie came out, and uh, man, I just know him to be a seeker. Yes. And 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 like so many of us, we we get down a road a little ways, and we start to realize, wow, we're out front of God. Yeah. We're, we're not really following him anymore. We we've assumed. Uh -huh. where we're supposed to go yeah. and then the next thing you off you're off in a cornfield <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's so true <laughs> I'm surrounded by a lot of those but you look at the body of work any any believer that's gone through struggles it, it, we tend to look at the moment the one song or the one sound bite but we don't look at the whole body of work and see that we're all works in progress and none of us are can i tell you another story that's really yeah. good love to hear it these are great vignettes well, you know, the Sweet Comfort Band, uh, we wrote a song called uh, You Led Me to Believe. Oh, that's a great ballad. Yeah. Actually, Randy Thomas wrote the whole song. I just sang on it. Um, yeah. But he's an incredible writer. And um, everybody has, even to this day, people still ask, well, who was that about? Mm. And I got to tell you the story. I mean, because we wrote that guy off you know, in a heartbeat, you know, he was one of the first guys I ever saw playing Christian funk music. I mean, he was, he was way out front before Love Song and yeah. all of the Jesus yeah. Movement people. Uh -huh. He was in a, he was in a band called Psalm 150 and they had a full horn section and wow. they were doing songs like God Be Man Magnified. And it was just screaming horns, just yeah. unbelievably good stuff. And I was... Cool. I was really depressed because I, you know, I didn't have a horn section like that. But you know, I mean, he was so, you know, on fire in the early days of his of his life, mm -hmm. and then he quit that band and he joined a a heathen rock band called Rubicon. And their first album cover looked like it had a cop, you know, a demonic figure on the cover, and yeah. you know, then he went off and he he did that for a while, and then he went into a a surf punk band and yeah. you know he was gone for a few years you know just he kind of burned out of trying to you know convert the world like we all do and yeah, yeah. but you know but you know people ask about that and i said <coughs> you know he's back doing bible studies now it's like uh, yeah. you know uh no you've got to be patient with people that yeah. sometimes we go off the rails yeah because we have to iron out or, you know, it's part of, uh, part of our journey. working out your own salvation it's in good. fear and trembling. And, yeah. you know, yeah. and sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, we're remodeling and, yeah, that's true. and it's not comfortable and nobody, no, and it doesn't look good from the curb. No, it doesn't. No, for, uh, yeah, logistics. We, uh, I, I know the Lord just go along with what you're saying recently kind of corrected me about a scripture that I've often quoted where Jesus says, wipe the door, dust off your feet if they don't receive you. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of people that reject the message and without taking it personally, we just thought, okay, leave it. But, but it seemed like God was saying, I didn't say do that permanently. You just wipe the <laughs> dust off your feet for now. Then you come That's back funny. when they're ready. But that was so good. It's like, God, thank you, because I don't want to give up on anybody. And the Lord is saying, I never told you to give up on anybody. I never <laughs> did. So just because I left that town or this person doesn't mean I ever came back. So it kind of goes along with what you're saying. And that song really does. I remember it. Uh, um, it's a great ballad. You led me to believe. And sometimes the very people who can lead us to believe have their own struggles. I, I think sometimes, too, it's the, we put people up on a pedestal, especially in Christian music. Uh, and I think it's off-putting. I know Carrie Livgren had, had responded to that kind of pressure when he made his profession of faith. And I think it led him to go back into the mountains in Colorado and do his own thing, which was, oh, very, yeah. was very good. But uh, he was smart enough to know what, where that was going to lead. 
and he didn't want that pressure, uh, undue pressure, I should say. And we, we, you know, as Christians, we need to, you know, <clears throat> celebrate people, but not their outward persona. And I guess that's. Well, I, you know, I've I've seen that a number of times uh, with uh, with guys that have, have professed some kind of faith. I did a concert with B.J. Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, early well it was a sweet comfort band but up in canada and wow the christians were as rude to him as i've ever seen oh, wow. and wow. and carrie livgren too i, I yep. met him when i was in two on tour back in kansas and uh, there's a few others that come to mind can't yep. think of their names right now mm -hmm. um but you know well known and <laughs> and, and the thing is you know some some mega organizations in in christian circles certainly want to jump on the bandwagon and use their name for the publicity yeah that's true but i don't think they were uh they were walking beside these people no uh, that's right yeah and it's unfortunate because you know um at some point we all are a little disillusioned by some of god's friends mm -hmm. yeah that's right yeah we even look at the bible Many of the heroes of faith were tragic heroes, and yet we uh, we uh, sort of uh, clear off the veneer and make them look like uh, perfect saints in in Sunday school. But Samson was never uh, a hero that you probably would want your kid to look up to, <laughs> you know. So I think we all have our flaws, and as Swindoll said, we're feeble, frail, and have to fail. But in all of that, there's redemption and there's there, there is a positive outlook and if we if we can help each other grow and instead of turning our back on one another i think it would help so yeah so tell us what you're doing now i love the whole shine project and um some of the videos you're putting out when i was looking on uh online on your website there were a number of great reflections on shine i'll listen to some of that um the song remember my mother uh, that was great. Um, so where are you at with that now? You had some podcasts too. Well, you know what? I've, yeah. I probably kind of mellowed out, not necessarily yeah. because I wanted to, but you know, in, you know, I'm everything that I do now is crowdfunded. So uh -huh. I'm doing a lot. I'm wearing a lot of my own hats, you know, producing and arranging and um, you know, and I know there's not going to be a band at the next concert. So I'm, right. you know, I tend, I've been focusing on ballads uh, uh -huh. in a lot of ways. I did several be as the direct result of the pandemic really? that are, you know, prayers to God through a uh, hardship. Uh -huh. And um, the last real gig I did until just recently was a funeral uh, last February. Mm hmm and they asked me to do uh it was for a 96 year old guy it was a friend of mine's dad mm -hmm. and he wanted me to do these old hymns these old church oh, hymns that's great and i so i learned i had to arrange them so that i could play it just me and a piano sure. so i did i did the old rugged cross yeah. and i come to the garden alone and um and then my management put it out to the people that support my music and just let them hear what I'm doing. And uh, they were so well received that we did another one. We, I, I did a new version of what a friend we have in Jesus that has kind of an old school R and B uh, yeah. touch to it. Uh -huh. That's but then um, in the meantime, the last couple of months I've been doing sentimental Christmas songs. I got to tell you, you know, Christmas I'm just. I'm just re rehashing stories uh, of my kids growing up. Yeah. And I, I did a Christmas song called Print of a Baby's Hand. Mm. And it's about sitting in front of the Christmas tree at, late at night and remembering, mm. you know, when your kids were little. Uh -huh. And, you know, it says, you know, and you, you're looking at the tree and there's these little popsicle stick memories. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, um, the, the hook of the song goes, and and now I understand, like baby Jesus didn't stay too long from the time his mother brought him home. In a blink, those tiny hands were gone, but they still run my world. Hmm. You know, that's, so I mean, they're, that's the songs great. are like, 
it kind of, uh, that's a great comparison with your kids and then to Jesus and then to say that. I love that. That's a great line. Well, you know what I, I just wanted to say, you know, yeah. I, I, initially, here's that conflicted message. I, I <laughs> wanted to say something like, stop calling him baby Jesus. Yeah, right. He's not a baby anymore. Like, yeah. drives me nuts when say, oh, well, the baby Jesus said. Yeah, and I'm going, he ain't no baby no more, dude. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you don't want to. No, you don't I want to go off on people. So, you know, I just so made it. <laughs> yeah. Tried to tie into, you know, how you start to realize that Jesus isn't a baby anymore. That's good. Um, and, you know, the, the Christmas songs I've written so far are real sentimental stories of, of uh, my own personal Christmases. And they're tear jerkers. I mean, yeah. that one will tear jerk oh you. Well, I already did. I already started. I'm just a sap as it is. But, uh, I well, like you know, the older you get, here's I was going to say that, <laughs> but yeah, I don't want to hit that more. a few times, so I don't want to make you feel bad. <laughs> yeah, the more weepy you get yeah. as an old man, I'm embarrassed. I, I cry all the time. It's like, oh, man, yeah. it's just a movie. I'm just I know. Gonna, it's yeah. just a movie. Why would you? Well, it reminded me of this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. My wife will look over and she'll say, oh, you're crying. <laughs> like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> no, I just got something in my eye. Yeah. Allergies are work, you know, uh, working. Yeah, dang time. allergies. <laughs> oh, great. Well, I love I love the reflective uh, spirit of, of shine. In fact, I, I just made some copies of, of the lyrics here, but it just sounds like with the, this song that you're, and I'm not sure how long this one has been out. I'm thinking it's more current than obviously the others, but that you're you're sort of looking back at your life spiritually speaking and you say, sometime we all come to find, we can't stay where we've been, best we remember, we had to surrender to get through the pain we were in. And the changes keep coming, can't seem to outrun them, and there's more than enough for one day. That's just great, great verse. I just love that. But You know what, that, I, I mean, that, <laughs> yeah. I Will Shine is, um, was inspired. I wrote that with Kurt, uh, Kurt, Kurt Patrick. I can't mm -hmm. think of his name right now. Yeah. Um, and it was, I mean, we, we've said goodbye to so many people, mm. friends, even people our own age now. We're, we're burying people right and left. And it really starts to dawn on you that life is a path, not a parking lot. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've walked several people to their last day on earth mm. uh, that had cancer. In fact, I'm walking somebody to... You know, they've got a, maybe a month left. Mm -hmm. um, and if, I mean, you know, but for the grace of God, she's going to uh, end. Her life's going to come to an end. Mm -hmm. And I've had to get comfortable with not trying to fix that all the time. Right. And the, the idea we can't stay where we've been was just astonishing to me. And it was yes. it was inspired by uh, we started writing the song because he had a in his studio, he had a little sign because some of his relatives had been through cancer. Mm -hmm. And it was a sign that said, what cancer cannot do? Mm -hmm. And uh, rather than steal the line straight out of there, I, right. I just thought, you know, we need to find a way in our, in our fourth quarter of life to, to push through mm -hmm. some of the in inevitabilities of being mortal yeah. and, and to, and for, to look for ways to uh, to shine to others, mm -hmm. but to keep ourselves motivated mm -hmm. and inspired that, you know, this is why we believe in Jesus, because he promised us eternal life. Mm -hmm. um, and that gives you hope, it gives you hope that, that this isn't just a waste of time. Amen. Reminds me of my mother, who I told you I was Zooming earlier. She's uh, got Alzheimer's and, of course, dealing with that. It's like a slow death because, yeah. you know, four years ago when she started exhibiting uh, signs of that, it, I could at least communicate. And, but it's getting harder and harder to do that because her fo focus is off. And, but it's the funniest thing that will get her laughing or emotional. My bald head for one thing. And <laughs> she just starts laughing when I do that. It's just like, yeah, I'm right. getting one. Yeah. You know, yeah. Getting a you bald head. more than I do, brother. But uh, play a song for her, an old hymn, or uh, show her pictures on my phone, and uh, and then that 
kind of re resonates uh, up till about a year ago. She was actually still able to play the piano, which she's always played by ear. And oh, yeah. Remember, remember songs like, like that. And of course, that's kind of no, gone, my, but it's, my it's, dad was my dad had Alzheimer's the last yeah. seven years of his life. Wow. And I mean, he couldn't remember people. He remembered me. Yeah. And he knew where the cookies were in the <laughs> kitchen. Yeah. But um, he'd sit down with his guitar and just launch into something from like 1925, wow. you know, that's amazing. you know, wow. old, old country Western songs. And uh -huh. yeah. That's cool. Last thing he played was a was a Wonder Bread commercial, I think. Wholesome, wholesome <laughs> oh bread. You're kidding. That's too funny. You know, one of the the more uh, poignant documentaries I've ever seen was the, and maybe you've seen it. Uh, was the Glenn Campbell? Uh, his, uh -huh. Oh my gosh, go some oh. years. And how they did that that whole year and toured with him, and went through thick and thin with his Alzheimer's was, I mean, I wept the whole way through. And at the time, I watched it with my mother because she was just exhibiting small signs. And she looked over at me and said, boy, it's hard getting old, isn't it? And she could see, she kind of had a recognition. She knew all the songs that he was singing, of course, as many of us do. Uh, but what a story, Glenn Campbell's story. Wow. And that whole year. Well, you know, what? if you live long enough, you're, you'll, you just keep saying goodbye to people. Yes. And, yeah. Um, it's, I think, you know, I'm grateful that I've had like, 10 or so years to to start getting accustomed to it. I lost my best friend on a motorcycle last year and I lost my mother uh, about three months later. And oh, that's tough. Um, this is where the rubber meets the road. You're going, okay, let's look up those scriptures about eternal life. Yeah. And what did Jesus say about that again? Because, uh, you know, we're our lives are hanging in the balance at this mm -hmm. point. That's right. They sure are. And there is, we know where we're going. So it's, it's like the uh, Dolly Parton, uh, I can't remember the, the, the male artist who wrote it. Uh, I want to say uh, Keith Urban, but it's not him. Uh, when I get to where I'm going, my gosh, what a beautiful song. Uh, and it's about heaven and going there and running our fingers through uh, the mane of a lion who is Jesus. Uh, so we really have, yeah. that's a great tune. Well, Brian, it's oh, you know awesome. What? Go ahead, go ahead. No, thanks. I appreciate you having me on. We could talk about the old days for a hundred yeah, years. We sure could. <laughs> That's why we need an eternity because, you know, yeah. my stories get longer and more verbose as I get older. <laughs> in fact, I get better in my older age about the story. <laughs> like <laughs> going, a fish that was this big, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it was huge. It was huge. <laughs> Hey, one last question, though, and it's been a thought that's been rattling around in my mind, and maybe you know of people who are trying to do this, but I think it'd be great if all the old-timers, CM artists, were able to get together and do a concert or at least a viral kind of uh, event, and you're kind of shaking your head and laughing. Maybe somebody's already tried to do that. It's just too difficult. People are, you know, uh, people are always, they're always talking about doing that, but, you know, yeah. to organize... Yeah. Christian musicians is like herding chickens. Number one, yeah. number two, there has to be a budget to start with, yeah. and then somebody has to be in charge. And right. you know, I just don't see that happening before Jesus comes back. <laughs> well, a lot of us are running out of the energy to do that, so we're going to have to find the younger generation that has no idea how good it was back in the day. <laughs> yeah, and they don't care either. <laughs> No. like they weren't i wasn't there dad yeah right uh, yeah yeah i was playing some tunes at school the other day and they were good tunes back in the 80s and the kids seriously looked at me and said is that from the 1600s i'm like thank you for making my day you no that's right up there i gotta <laughs> tell you I, I i i talked to this first grade class of, of little kids mm -hmm. um every year uh down in georgia yeah and they I'll do a Zoom with them too, and it's like you know, because the teacher plays my songs to them. Oh, that's great! And uh, wow. but they sent me one kid sent me a text, and he's going. He says, uh, "He says, oh, you live in California." He says, "So do you know Lewis and Clark?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too funny! I'll have to tell my wife. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel great now. That's good. Uh, I do get a discount though for being a senior citizen at this point. So there's that. 
There's that. That's right. Well, listen, I always love to offer to pray for people when, when we sign off, whether it's a musician <laughs> or a book writer, an author or whatever. Anything that I can pray with you on? I know you mentioned a few tragedies that you've gone through. Just to the Lord. No, you know what? I mean, you it's strength and let's just pray for direction because yeah. I mean this mm -hmm. this world is so squirrely yeah. right now yeah. and everybody's just vindic vindictive. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I'm going, what is the what is the direction that God would have us go in mm -hmm. in the future? Yeah. I just get the sense that we can't do things, you know, we can't stay where we've been. Right. We can't right. do things the way we used to do them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's look for a fresh thing that uh, mm -hmm. the actual words of God saying, here's the way, walk ye in it. Well, that, that really is true. I'm hearing that from different people, Brian. So it's interesting you should mention that. Well, let me pray for you, brother, and we'll pray for that. Uh, All right, then. All right. Lord, thank you so much for my friend Brian Duncan. It's been such an honor and a privilege to chat with him here by Zoom from California to uh uh, Michigan, Lord, I uh, pray your blessing upon his life. Thank you for the reflective spirit and uh, the heart that he has for you and for uh, your people and just for the way things are going in this world, Lord. Uh, he's expressed the concern that many of us have, Lord, is we need to know where we're going as the body of Christ and things are changing at a breakneck speed. And Father, I, we pray for your spirit just to show us uh, how to be, what to do, and to think outside the box with our lives and our testimony and I'm using, and uh, Lord Jesus, we just pray a blessing upon Brian and his family, and give him a good day, and thank you so much for this time together, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, hey, this has been fun. Let's do it again Thanks sometime, for brother. A break. Okay. It's lunchtime here, so. Oh, go uh, have your lunch, I gotta pick up my wife. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go get a flock of chicken wings. Okay. Thank you very God much. God bless, see ya. God bless, man.